The North American Freight Association has basically confirmed what Mercedes said when Mercedes claimed that the Tesla Semi broke the laws of physics. By the way, that's a direct quote from Mercedes-Benz Trucking Division CEO. The Tesla Semi breaks the laws of physics. Well, Automotive News and the North American Trucking Association have revealed the data. They have revealed that the Tesla Semi does almost exactly what Tesla claim it does. Now, there's one problem, though. The next best electric truck was so bad in comparison to the Semi that it doesn't bode well for electric trucks in the market in general. Fortunately, though, many, many billions of dollars have been invested over the last couple of months by some of the world's biggest trucking companies into electric trucks. And we've just seen the Mercedes-Benz e-Actros with a very impressive range, nowhere near as much as the Tesla Semi, but it's a very good range, come out with a massive 678 kilowatt hour battery pack, which comprises of lithium iron phosphate cells. So it is happening, but here are the results of the tests from the Trucking Association that show what the Tesla Semi actually can do in the real world in comparison to its rivals. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Last month, the North American Council for Freight Efficiency revealed this data. This has nothing to do with Tesla whatsoever. Tesla had no say in this. I don't even know if Tesla wanted to be involved. But anyway, Tesla's all-electric Class A truck demonstrated its range and charging efficiency advantages compared with the competition from established truck makers such as Freightliner, Volvo and Nikola. Tesla is a leader in terms of performance and range, said John Brosel, CEO of CalStart, a clean transportation industry organization, citing the data. They are also the only ones demonstrating super fast charging capability. Now that said, Mercedes-Benz's new electric truck apparently is capable of charging with similar one megawatt charging speeds for its new LFP packs in its e -Actros. That vehicle, though, is not yet on sale, I believe, in North America, but will be very soon. For more than two weeks, the trucking research group tracked information on a series of metrics as 22 trucks drove across North America fulfilling actual orders. So this is real world testing. That's the really cool thing here. Data cover the charging infrastructure, charge management, truck performance, cost of ownership, and a number of other metrics. Tesla semi trucks operated by Pepsi Company or Pepsi Co covered more miles per day on average than any other vehicle across the length of the run on less event. In fact, it wasn't just more, it was a lot more. Data collected during the event showed the semi can travel around 400 miles and then recharge to about 80% state of charge in a surprising 45 minutes. Now, I don't believe this was using Tesla's one megawatt charges. So it could theoretically charge quicker than that once the right infrastructure has been installed. PepsiCo's best performing Tesla Semi covered an average of around 574 miles per day over the course of the 18 days. Now, obviously it could have done more than that, but it wasn't being used all the time. The next non-Tesla vehicle was Watt EV's Nikola Trey electric truck with an average of around 255 miles per day. This was followed by OK Produces, Freightliner eCascadia that did 181 miles per day and performance teams Volvo VNR Electric with an average of about 175 miles. One PepsiCo Tesla Semi did 1,076 miles in a single day. That's around about 1,750 kilometers in 24 hours to give you guys some context if you're not using miles. 1,754 kilometers in a 24-hour period. That's, I don't know how that happened, but that's amazing. Now, the reason it was able to do that is because it used Tesla's fast charging. It used its superchargers, which are capable of 750 kilowatt charging. That brought the battery charge to around 47% on the first charge. They only charged for a shorter period of time. They then charged to 89% and then charged to 52%. So they charged three times. The first time, like I said, I believe they only charged for 20 minutes, 
but then they charge for longer this, the next two times. It seems to me as though they charge the equivalent of two full times. So if you add 47% and 52% plus 89%, you're looking at about 190%. So they basically charge the truck twice and they're able to do 1,750 kilometers. We don't know how much range they had left though at the end of the third trip. So they may have had plenty of range left in the battery pack. PepsiCo said 60% of the miles driven over the 18 days of the event with a gross vehicle weight of 72,000 pounds. That's a weight that's average in the logistics industry, says Automotive News, pretty close to the 82,000 pound limit for electric truck and trailer combinations. So it was around 10,000 pounds less than the limit. The most important takeaway from the events is inside EVs was that electric trucks have the ability to match the operation of diesel counterparts. So here in Australia, when you're driving trucks uh, long distances, you have to stop. It's just pretty similar in most countries around the world. When you've done four hours of driving, you've got to stop for 30 minutes or you have to have a second driver. So they do have logbooks on this and they do test this in many countries around the world. You need to stop generally for most drivers, most companies, they will stop on about 30 minutes every four hours. So that means you could just continue to drive your Tesla Semi as long as you've got fast charges forever, indefinitely. You could just keep on driving um, if you're stopping for 30 minutes every four hours. Half of the trucks were using second charge events during the shifts, and that included Tesla. While the Semi's performance during the run on less event is amazing news, Tesla have only so far produced around about a 100 Tesla Semis. So, Currently, they are hiring new staff at their factory, I believe, which is in Las Vegas, and increasing production at that factory. They've got a long way to go, of course, because the Tesla Semi uses 4680 battery cells, and Tesla's still working on those, working on the dry electrode coating on those battery packs, those battery cells. By the way, if you're wondering what is in a 4680 cell, what's the chemistry? It's an NCM nickel cobalt manganese chemistry, not LFP, like the Mercedes e Actros. Could they use LFP batteries in the future? Very possible, they could use that chemistry. Wouldn't happen for a number of years though. So we're still years away from that happening for Tesla trucks. But anyway, that's besides the point here because the future of the trucking industry is clearly electric. That's the main takeaway for me after seeing many, many billions of dollars. In fact, I think from the numbers that I put together, truck companies have committed to investing over $50 billion over the next three years into electrifying the trucking industry. So the belief that trucks would go to hydrogen, and that's where hydrogen was most needed in the long haul trucking industry, I believe has been completely disproven by the investments we've seen from the biggest trucking companies in the world over the past six months. Either way, this is amazing news. And it's kind of funny to see Mercedes make these claims, breaks the laws of physics. They were basically saying Tesla was lying. Um, but to see it actually play out in the real world, that the Tesla Semi does what Tesla says it does. Thanks for watching.